Well, thank you so much, President Emeritus Lambert, for joining me this morning um, in this conversation as we approach the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Um, you were the president of the university on that day, and for a lot of generations older than ours, 9-11 is the day that they vividly remember where they were and what was happening. So just to start off, could you walk me through your morning um, on that day, you know, when you woke up, do you remember what was that day supposed to look like for you? Well, it's a, um, it's a day I'll, I'll never forget in my life. Uh, we were planning to open Road Stadium that coming weekend. First, play our first football game ever in our first on-campus football stadium. And we were, I got up thinking, we have a special college coffee this morning to celebrate uh, the opening of Road Stadium. The football coach was gonna speak, the marching band was gonna be there. It was gonna be just this big celebratory college coffee. And so it was just about this time we're, that we're speaking now, we were getting ready for college coffee and all of a sudden the news reports start coming in and we hear about a, a plane hitting one of the towers uh, in New York and thinking, boy, that's strange. What could have happened? It must have been a horrible accident. And, and then as, as the college coffee hour is approaching, it, it becomes evident that something serious is, is amiss here. So we went outside and it was a glorious day, just like today, blue sky, it was nice and cool, it was a perfect fall day, sun was shining, the marching band is walking across Scott Plaza, you know, playing. And, and so it was like a celebration is about to crash in with this gigantic national tragedy that is unfolding before our eyes. So we just stopped it. We just said, um, I went to the microphone and said we were planning on having a celebration this morning. There's some very bad news coming out of New York. Um, we'll keep everybody informed. Um, so we, we, stopped, we stopped the celebration and then I asked then Chaplain Richard McBride to come to the podium and to offer a, a prayer. So I guess the morning for me is this juxtaposition of you're thinking you're going into one of the best celebrations Elon ever had, and it turned into one of the, the most tragic days in American history. And so you were at College Coffee, as you said, um, when the news report started coming in from New York about the attacks. Um, who was the first person you called? after you heard the news? My brother works in New York City. Uh, so I went into my office and said, gave him a quick call and said, where are you? And he said, uh, thanks for checking on me, I'm fine. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll keep in touch. He, he was in the city, but not anywhere near um, the World Trade Center. Then we gathered the senior staff um, as we typically do in times of emergency, we met in the Williams Conference Room and it was like literally feeling your way through step by step as more information comes in about what do we do next? Do we, do we cancel classes? And we decided, no, we shouldn't do that. Students need to be together. They need to be with their professors. So we kept classes going. Um, we had a parent killed in the Pentagon that morning, Canfield Boone. So, you know, at some points at times, the, the, you know, the news kept getting worse. And we have so many families from New Jersey and New York and Connecticut. Um, we have, you know, I have a former trustee, Frank Lyon, who went to more funerals than he could count up there that day, that, you know, the, in the weeks following. Um, so we just put one foot in front of the other every hour of the day trying to figure out what to do next. You said you're, you know, you're in this room with senior staff, you, know, you keep getting updates, the news almost seems to be getting worse, you guys are trying to figure out what to do during the day as news keeps unfolding. What was going through your head during all of this, um, you know, knowing that you are in such a big role, but also knowing that so many p people here potentially are directly impacted by this news? Well, you're responsible for 7,000 students, right, and uh, in, a, in a campus community, and so that's the first thing that is on your mind. But we had the television on, 
And I remember watching the second tower fall. I mean, this was, this, we were meeting as this crisis was literally still on, on fire. Um, and so it was a matter of how do we, you know, that was the guiding question. How do we support students? How do we keep this community together? And we have this general rule about disasters that <laughs> in, in terms of running the university, if the disaster is out there, you know, if it's a hurricane in Louisiana, we want to keep people here. We don't want people running to the disaster. Um, if the disaster is going to hit here, like an incoming hurricane, then we want to disperse people, right? So this was one of those situations where we knew we need to keep people close and, and support one another. So we started organizing um, day by day a series of events where the community could just, people wanted to be together. They wanted to hug. They wanted to sit close to one another. They wanted to support one another. So that very afternoon, we had our first gathering at the Elon Community Church. We organized um, two later gatherings, a, a panel in um, McKinnon Hall, uh, which I have a story to tell you about. And, um, and we had a large, like spur of the moment convocation in alumni gym a couple of days later. We didn't even put up chairs. We just had everybody sit on the floor and, and the place was packed. People wanted to gather. They wanted to support one another. It was a, it was a very confusing um, and, and scary time. And, and you had mentioned that your brother was in New York um, at the time. That was the first person you called. And you were originally from New York, is that correct? Upstate New York. Upstate New York, okay. So I can imagine this day hit home a little bit for you um, in a different way, you know. So stepping outside your role as president of the university for a little bit, what was it like for you just to juggle this news personally and professionally? I would say uh, my attention was 99% focused on Elon and and per, as long as I knew my, my immediate family was safe, I think my attentions needed to be devoted here, and they were. You also started this role um, as president in 1999, so this probably was, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, the biggest event that you had to navigate through um, in this position that you were in. Talk to me a little bit about what what that was like. Well, um, Elon is a pretty amazing community, and it comes together. Um, in, in amazing ways, in times of crisis, um, we support one another here. And that really played out in a, in a big way over the course of, the course of that week. Um, we, there were so many unknowns. I, I, we were literally trying to feel our way through this hour by hour. There was a, there was a plane crash at Kennedy Airport before Wednesday night where I'm on a, a panel speaking about this, I've got to get that exact flight number. But I was sitting in my office, it was about this time of the morning, early morning, and uh, my assistant came in and said, there's been another plane that went down at JFK. And we immediately thought, oh my goodness, please don't let this be another act of terrorism. It, it wasn't, it was never defined as such. It was just a plane fell out of the sky and, but when that, when that plane went down, I stopped and thought to myself, oh my goodness, you know, we were just beginning to feel like we're going to get back to normal. And then this other incident happens. And I thought, will we ever, will we ever be, will we be flying again anytime soon safely? And, and what are the implications of that for the university? You know, so many of our students fly here. Uh, so you know, I think as, as the days and weeks went on, there was a lot of economic uncertainty too, right? And, um, and that was sort of just added to the angst, I think. And you kind of um, touched on this earlier, but Elon is pretty unique in the sense that for a southern school, we actually have a large population of students who are originally from up north, um, specifically areas that were impacted directly by 9-11. How did that sort of change or influence your plan um, when it came to deciding on how you guys were going to address the situation as it unfolded? Um, I, I just think it, 
we were just simply hyper aware of that fact that this was this was not something that was a thousand miles away that didn't really affect us that this was this was touching families it was it touched one family very directly we lost one one dad um, but lots of other people lost friends and and that that uh, there were many people who were just deeply shaken by this on a on a personal level I think that was just it was the backdrop of the whole of the whole scenario and what was it like for you to sort of console these families and students that were directly impacted I, I think people were just um, genuinely honest and and demonstrated such care and concern for one another um, faculty would start classes by saying let's let's talk about what's going on how are you guys doing how are you feeling um, and there was there was just a lot of that conversation that went on all through that that fall semester I think people were checking on one another constantly um, and it was um, it was scary and then you know as the months went on and we went to war in Iraq and Afghanistan I mean that that really affected the campus in a in a big way too um, there was very strong differences of opinion in the country at that point in time about whether we were making the right moves and and so that was you know yet another set of aftershocks that lasted you know a few years in terms of of how our nation was responding to the to the crisis so it went 9-11 lasted a long time I, I I thought oftentimes back then when will I ever again wake up and this won't be the first thing I think about in the morning I mean it no longer is of course but it was for a very very long time and you had mentioned um, sort of a little bit about what those days immediately following the 9-11 attacks looked like here on campus with the different sort of events and things that you guys had going on you mentioned a story at McKinnon Hall could you touch on that a little bit it's it's an example of the kind of generosity that I think people extended um, to one another so the very first King Hussein scholar that we had at Elon was a young man by the name of Laith Majali from Jordan he was a com communications major um, terrific young man he might have been the only Muslim student we had on campus at the time um, and he he's a first year he's been on campus for what three weeks and he shows up at this event at McKinnon Hall where we have a, a, a panel of students speaking about how this has impacted them and how they're feeling about all of this and Lace stands up in the back of the room packed McKinnon Hall and introduces himself hi I'm Lace I'm from Jordan um, and he said I just want to say that everything that you know about my country and the Middle East you probably know from television and everything that I know about America I know from TV and he said that's we have to take time to get to know one another so please invite me to lunch invite me to coffee let's let's really get to know one another and one another's cultures and backgrounds and religions well during the next four years Lath was probably the most powerful student ambassador we had on campus he was everywhere um, he came back in 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 another year was a, our, our commencement speaker here um, years after he graduated but it was such you know a it was such a powerful human moment where you have this person who might feel like oh my goodness here I am I'm one of maybe the only or one of very few Muslims on campus 
there was a tremendous amount of anti-Muslim sentiment after 9-11. And he stands up and says, here I am, get to know me, I'm your classmate. I mean, it was, it was so incredibly powerful. I'll never forget that moment. And what was that like for Leith to sort of open up this conversation about what was going on nationally, um, like you said, with the differing opinions um, after 9-11? What, what, did that change any sort of behavior post 9-11? I think it did. Um, you know, one of the things that I had, I think, one of the ways that I think President George W. Bush did really well after 9-11 was to draw a a big, solid, bright line between terrorism and Islam and, and making it very clear that Islam is a peaceful religion. And, um, and, but that was, I think, the beginnings of dialogues on campus about the importance of interfaith understanding. And today we have the Truett Center for Religious and Spiritual Life. I kind of trace the genesis of that um, back to 9-11 where we, where I think all of us understood that we had, that religion was such an important uh, force in the world. It was a part of almost any news story you would see one way or the other on the front page of the New York Times or the, the Wall Street Journal. It was, it's such a dominant part of culture and that we needed to do more to uh, be religiously diverse here at Elon and to make sure that, um, that as part of our quest to have our students leave the university as global citizens, that you know, religious, interreligious understanding, multi-faith understanding needed to be a part of that definition of citizenship. And I, I think that relates back to 9-11 very directly. And did you notice any other sort of um, behavior changes, whether that was in student life on campus or within and amongst the faculty, um, in addition to that conversation? I, I, think, I think the campus felt very united. The country felt very united after 9-11. After um, that didn't last long, um, because then I think the conversation shifted to how do we respond? Um, is, 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 the war in Iraq, too much of an extension of going after Osama bin Laden and Al Qaeda, and so it that moment of unity was very brief, and and then I think nationally it turned into um, a split in terms of what were the what were the right ways to proceed. And what was it like, sort of rebuilding, you know? student life and just life here on campus um, after that sort of feeling of unity sort of started to dissipate a little bit and we did feel a split. What was that like for you to sort of navigate through? Um, you know, I think for a lot of people it was, it was, it was deeply personal. Um, Richard McBride is speaking at the Elon Community Church tomorrow night on the same panel that I am and um, he was our, you know, our, ch our chaplain, uh, someone responsible for the spiritual life of the campus. I think someone probably personally opposed to the war and yet had a son there flying Black Hawk helicopters. Um, and so, you know, life is complicated, right? Um, I think that's a, that story is kind of a metaphor for um, the mixed emotions that that everybody felt. There was a lot of fear. There was a lot of fear. And fear never takes you to a good place. Do you feel like you personally changed um, since 9-11? Uh, I think it was it was the first I think significant crisis of my presidency, 2001. I started in 1999, as you know. Um, we had had some contentious issues on campus before, 
the mascot change, you know, the move from college to university, all of those things stirred up the campus. But this was so entirely different. This was um, the world changing in a big way. It was seismic. Um, it, you know, shook the foundations of the place. Uh, we would have another one of those events um, seven years later during the financial crisis when, you know, just the bottoms fell out of the financial market. Those were moments where you felt as kind of the leader of the institution, um, this is such a big change in the world. I wonder how we're going to be fundamentally different next year. Will we have a freshman class as a first year class as big as we've had before? Will people not be able to travel? And after the financial crisis, it was, um, will, will people's wealth has dramatically been reduced. Are they still gonna be able to, will they still be willing to send their, their children to private colleges? Um, President Book had a, a similar existential crisis with, with COVID, right? I mean, early in her, early in her presidency too. Um, these are moments that where the, where big events hit the world and it just shakes the foundations of the university and, and you're sitting there thinking, we're going to come out of this different. We don't know exactly how, but we will be changed because of these world events. And that's part of what you're trying to feel your way through as well, um, post the immediacy of the crisis. There are now two grades at Elon who were not even alive when 9-11 um, happened. So how do you and Elon as a whole try to continue to teach about the impact that 9-11 had on society and just our world? First of all, that's hard to believe, um, but it's, it's true. I mean, I remember I was in third grade when John F. Kennedy was assassinated. And for my generation growing up, that was sort of the moment that shook the country, brought it to its knees, was a, was a national tragedy and period of mourning that, that was a reference point for us for the rest of our lives. I don't think that you, it's easy to, I never lived through the, the Great Depression, but my parents did, and my grandparents did, and I heard lots of stories about it. Um, and I think I can, you can experience some understandings of that vicariously, but it, it's not like living through it. Um, and so I just don't think it is the same thing as having experienced it um, as, a, as a part of your childhood or your or your young adulthood. And what is your message to students as we go into this weekend and as we approach the 20th anniversary of 9-11? Well, um, I, guess I, I guess I wanna go back to underscoring how important it is to leave Elon as a global citizen, as somebody that, that considers the big issues of the world seriously, the challenges of the world, um, these, we, we, are, we are called on, I think, as people with educations at, at places like Elon, to, to try to do big and challenging things with those educations. The work that, that we're doing, I think, in, in interfaith and multi-faith work at the university, for instance, is so very important. I think it's, you know, I think it's, it's the future in terms of, of bridge building internationally. And we're one of the top, probably top 10 universities in the country that is, is doing that kind of work. So I, I, I feel there's such urgency to, to um, tackle these big, these big problems. I think about everything we've read about in the last week with regard to climate change and all of the, all of the um, damage that's happened across the world this summer and particularly in the, in the last few weeks. 
how are we prepared to respond? How are we prepared to lead um, with, with, respond to, with, um, with regard to those challenges? I just don't want our students to ever feel like this is too big, it's too out there, it's too far away, I can't affect it. But each of us has the, the power and the capacity by the way we live our lives to make the world a better place and to create change. And, and I, I, want our, I want our students to leave feeling that they are empowered to be the change they want to see in the world. And what would you say to those students who maybe are afraid or who are thinking, you know, especially as this weekend approaches, wow, some of these issues in the world are too big for me as an individual to overcome or to handle or to process? I would say start small and start locally. Um, there's, we have uh, one thing that we didn't have in Burlington, North Carolina um, in uh, 2001 was a mosque, but we do now. And we have an active Muslim community here in Burlington. It's two miles from campus. Go explore, go see, go talk to people, have lunch with somebody, um, and have a conversation with somebody who's, who's um, of a, a different religious faith than you. Uh, I, none of us are the president of the United States or have these big strings we can pull, but I have this tremendous belief and faith that if we start local and we start small uh, and we keep building and we, and, and we persevere, we can create change and will create change. Well, hopefully, you know, as we approach the 20th anniversary this weekend, it does serve as a reminder for students to, like you said, start locally and just sort of reflect on everything that's sort of happened and what they can do as they move on forward with their lives. But that was everything we have for you today. President Emeritus Lambert, thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be with you. Good luck.